So in response to a lot of requests to do so, I'm putting together a, a YouTube video to uh, walk through a worked example of problem number 9. It's from the back of um, chapter 12 in, in the problems there. And so what I'd like to have you do before we get going and I walk you through how to do an ANOVA on that particular data set, um, please open up uh, your books to page 388 and be looking at problem number 9 or you know if you need to call it up uh, through the MindTap reader. So if you're looking, first off let's take a look at the, the little data set on page 388 and you'll see that there's three treatment groups. There's four scores uh, in each of the treatment groups and then below the, the row of data you'll see that the mean has been calculated for each treatment group and the T stands for um, the total of the scores in each treatment group and T is just exactly like sum of X. I've made kind of a notation there to remind you that. And then uh, sum of squares is the sum of squares for each of the, the scores in that particular data set. Off to the right uh, in that da array of data you'll see a big N that represents the total uh, number of cases across all three groups and then uh, the big G which is the grand total of all of the scores and then also uh, something called sum of X squared which uh, I'm going to show you how to calculate that but sometimes that's going to be given to you in these problems sometimes you'll have to calculate it yourself so we're going to go ahead and walk through the process of how to calculate it yourself so now in taking a look at the worksheet you'll notice that I've transferred the T values the total uh, of the score values for each of the groups uh, onto the three lines here. And so 16, 8, and 24, the three T values from that data set, and when you add those up, that's where the grand total of scores comes from. Now, before I get rolling into the ANOVA formula, take a look at what I've also put down here, and this is designed to represent, uh, kind of illustrate my comments. The ANOVA formula is like the sum of squares formula on steroids. And so each of the components within the sum of squares formula we're going to see reflected uh, in the ANOVA process uh, as we work through the different phases of the formula. So we'll get back to that here in just a second. So going down through the, the paper, we talked about where the T values come from. It's the, the total of the scores for each treatment group and synonymous with sum of X and then when you add 16, 18, and 24 up that's where the 48 comes from and then you have some spaces to enter in the number of cases uh, in each sample group and so there's four scores in each treatment group and uh, the total N, overall N across all three samples is 12. Then we get to a series of steps on the ANOVA worksheet where you see the sum of squares formula reflected. So for this first grouping, uh, it writes out in words what you should be doing to calculate this particular number. And so, for example, the first one here says calculate the sum of squared scores for x1. Well, x1 or sum of x1 synonymous with t1, uh, what uh, to get this particular number here, and here's where I want to have you take a look at the, the data set in your book again. The scores in treatment group number one are 4, 2, 6, and 4. And if we were to square each of them, just like we would do if we're calculating the sum of squares formula, it would be uh, 4 times 4 is 16, 2 times 2 is 4, and then 36 and 16 uh, respectively. And if you were to add those values up, 16, 4, 36, and 16, that's where that 72 comes from. So if it's helpful when you have this worksheet printed out and you're working the ANOVA problems, you can put T over each X value if it helps you kind of remember um, the, the link or the relationship between um, sum of X and capital T. It's the same, the same number, it's just a different notation for each of them. So same thing for treatment group number two, if you squared each of those values and summed them up uh, and treatment group three. And then the final value, which you see reflected in the data set, that sum of x squared, that's where that number comes from. It is just summing up 72, 26, and 162 gives you that 260. Well now on the, the bottom of the first page, this uh, last 
group of steps. Step 16 through um, 19 is the steps for each group, treatment group, and then step 20 is where we sum those scores up. But I'll, over here on the left, I've put in the notation that is uh, reflective or shows the link between the ANOVA formula and the sum of squares formula. So we're going to be doing this replication of steps over here, and the math is shown on the right. Now, if you look at the top of this worksheet, you'll see where I got the value 16. That's just the total for treatment group number one, total for treatment group number two, total for treat treatment group number three, and then following the formula, uh, that sum of x squared, 16 squared is 256 divided by the number of scores in that particular group is where that 64 comes from. And you can follow the math that same way for the subsequent two groups, which results in these preliminary totals of uh, 64, 16, and 144. And then the, the next step to calculate the sum of the squared sum of scores, you just add those three values up and that's where that 224 comes from. So now we're ready to move on to the second page of the worksheet and really most of the heavy lifting math-wise you've done already on the first page. There's a little bit more math to do up at the top here to finish calculating our three intermediate quantities. And right up here, I like to call this as a numbers parking place because once we've calculated intermediate quantity one, we just move the values that we created from the first page right here to make them handy to do the subsequent math steps. But for intermediate quantity one, here's the formula that we're going to be working to uh, calculate that quantity. So it's the grand total from the first page squared, the grand total of all the score values, 48 squared divided by our big N of 12. So that works out to 2304 divided by 12 or 192. And then for steps 22 and 23, I t typed in that no math required. Even though if you read this a certain way, it implies that you might need to be doing some kind of math, that's not what you really need to do here. Uh, all you need to do is go grab the number that you calculated from line 15, which is 260, and the number that you calculated from line 20, <coughs> which is 224, and just move those here just to have them handy to work the next few steps. So now we're, we're getting towards the home stretch to be able to calculate the, our F statistic down here at the bottom, but we've got a few more values to calculate. Now if you listen to the um, YouTube videos about how the ANOVA formula works, you heard me say that for simple ANOVA, the overall variability uh, or SS total, which represents the number that represents the overall variability, is divided two ways, uh, between and within variability. So if you're looking down these uh, lines here, you'll see that we have a sum of squares total we have two ways to calculate our sum of squares within, and it depends upon what information is given to us in the story problem is which method you use, and I'll go through that with you in the second uh, worked example. And then two ways to calculate SS between. So because we have all of our intermediate quantities here, we're going to be using the numbers from our numbers parking place to calculate those values. And it's just a simple subtraction intermediate 2 minus intermediate 1, take the numbers from those intermediate quantities, uh, and you can see the ma simple math done there, and then intermediate 2 minus intermediate 3, and then intermediate 3 minus intermediate 1 gives us our three intermediate quantity values. Now moving down the page, just like we had three different ways of calculating sum of squares, there's likewise three different ways to calculate degrees of freedom. We've got a, a degrees of freedom total, degrees of freedom between, degrees of freedom within, and here's the little formulas to use to calculate those, um, those values. So K is a new notation unique to ANOVA, and it just represents how many treatment groups there are. So to calculate degrees of freedom between, we have three treatment groups minus one, 
so our df between value is 2. And then for degrees of freedom within, our big N of 12 minus our three groups. 12 minus 3 gives us a df within of 9. And then for df total, our big N of 12 minus 1 gives us uh, 11. So now we're almost down to being able to calculate our F statistic. Got two more steps to do. We need to calculate our mean square, or MS between, and our mean square, or MS within. So you can see maybe that how the, the formula works is we develop numbers in previous steps and then we roll those numbers into the next steps, which is what we're going to be doing. So you grab from up above your, let's see, I'll roll that up a little bit, your uh, SS between of 32 divided by your DF between of 2, so 32 divided by 2 gives us an, a mean square between of 16. You do the same thing with your MS within. And then finally we're ready to calculate our F statistic. So we take our MS between of 16 divided by our MS within of 4, and that gives us our F value of 4.00. Now down here you see something called an ANOVA table, and that's a part of the universal language of statistics that researchers use to package up the results of an ANOVA test. All the previous steps you can kind of consider the behind the scenes work, and if you were writing this up for a journal article, then you would create an ANOVA table and you would populate it with the numbers just like here. And these are the values that we calculated up above. So if you take a look at each column, you should notice that the DF between of 2 plus the DF within of 9 totals up to our DF total of 11. And up above when we were calculating those numbers, we didn't realize that that's how it would go. But if you've done the math right, that's how it should work. And uh, over here, we put our F statistic. And then here is the proper way to package up the statistics. And I'll talk a little bit more about this when I uh, walk you through the next worked example.